Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Bayer Crop Science and CNMC. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Wheat School. Today I'm near Cambridge, Ontario, catching up with Curtis Pilkington from Bear Crop Science. Sir, how you doing? Good. Yourself, Bern? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. And today I want to talk about weed control in a field like this. Uh, we got some visitors here who we need to take care of. And I guess, Curtis, um, you know, a field like this going into winter wheat, what do you need to think about from the perspective of, you know, the benefits of weed control at this time? Right. So I think this field's a great opportunity to highlight the advantage of fall weed control in wheat. And if we look around, we've got lots of Canada fleabane, a big patch right here. There's also a decent amount of dandelion in this field and some annuals that are just sort of finishing off, which highlights a, a nice weed spectrum, I think, to have this conversation. And when we think about weed control in the fall in cereals, I think there's three big advantages that I like to focus on. So first is going to be eased management burden, ideally. Second is going to be the opportunity for better control of some challenging weeds. And then third is there's a yield component as well where we can see an edge for fall weed control. Tell us about the burden. Obviously, we get in here, clean this up, uh, makes the spring a lot easier. Exactly. So I think this spring was a great example of where things can go wrong. So we had a really cold and a really wet spring, and a lot of growers had a tough time getting into their fields until, honestly, it was a little bit late to see effective weed control. And so if we can move that herbicide application up into the fall, especially if we have an open fall of good conditions, mm -hmm. we can get that done out of the way we're not going to compete with planting when it gets warm in the spring. And also, the other side of this is in the spring, we would often don't want to do multiple applications on our wheat crop. So we think about, let's mix in the fungicide, the herbicide, maybe the PGR all in one. Mm -hmm. And that can mean that we're not always using those products at quite the right timing. So if we can get the herbicide down now, maybe that allows us to put our fungicide down at a more opportune mm -hmm. time in the spring. Let's talk about some challenging weeds. Well, we have a few here in this field. What are you seeing here and you know, what do you want to be keeping an eye on from, uh, from a challenging weed perspective? Yeah, so on the weed side, fall brings a great opportunity for perennials, for our biannuals and our winter annuals. So everything that's going to be up and growing right now and it's going to overwinter and cause problems in the spring. Largely because they're already here, so we're going to see growth early in the spring before we can really get at them. We also know for our perennials um, and for our biannuals, those ones with the, the deep set root system, there's a real advantage to getting that herbicide down now. What we're seeing now, they're switching from that growth pattern of throwing everything up into top growth to trying to bring those nutrients back down into the root system to get ready to overwinter. So if that herbicide can hitch a ride down into the roots, it can really kill them where they start and uh, prevent that regrowth in the spring. An example of one that's a real challenge that I think we need to watch out for is fleabane here, can of fleabane. And it can be an issue because we see it emerge as in winter annual. Yep. Those little rosettes that pop up now and they can really get going early in the spring. If we're going after them now when they're small with a product like say Infinity FX, mm -hmm. we can kill them before they really have the chance to get going. What about grasses? Yeah, so grasses are another tricky one. Um, I think bluegrass especially has been a growing concern for a lot of growers in Ontario. Some areas of my territory as well, we deal with silky bent grass, another winter annual. Now, grasses in a wheat crop, that can be tough to control. And so we really want to get them when they're small. And I mean really small. Um, if you look up, Mike Cobra's done some good work on bluegrass. And, and he found under 10 centimeters tall, and I'd say even smaller ideally. And so if we can get them once they've just emerged in the fall, that's probably our best chance for a complete kill. Um, versus waiting till spring, if they start to flower, odds are it's too late. Let's talk about yield advantages here. I want to look at some work from Peter Sikama here uh, on the yield advantages of getting control in the fall. Yeah, so Bear did some really great work um, with Peter Sikama on a trial a number of years ago, I believe 2019 to around 2021. And he looked at, let's see, fall weed control versus spring weed control with a whole slate of herbicides. Very interesting. He found that there is a seven bushel yield advantage for fall weed control versus spring. And what this really indicates, I think, is that just like corn, just like soybeans, wheat has a critical weed-free period that we need to be focusing on. We want to ensure that when that crop is first growing and first developing, it's not being um, damaged by interference from weeds in the field. So if we can keep it clean early, that's a big advantage to the crop. Now you mentioned as well, though, um, sometimes you keep it clean early. It doesn't look that good in the spring. Yeah, and so this is another really interesting part of this work. So even though the yield came from the fall weed control, Peter found that in the spring, 
Spring applications would deliver cleaner fields when you're looking at them in the spring, but it all comes back to that critical weed free period. If we keep it clean early, that's what's protecting our yield. Well, we might see some more weeds in the spring. If we need to, we can go after them with a second app or clean up after that wheat crop comes off. Okay, Curtis, let's talk strategy here. In a field like this, for example, uh, you know, are we looking at uh, you know, a, a burn down or some in-crop treatment? For sure. So I think you've really got two opportunities in the fall, which you mentioned for weed control, burn down and in-crop. What you choose is gonna depend a little bit on the field scenario and your, and your weed pressure. Um, in this field, it's tough to say, I'd be thinking more of an in-crop right now. Just looking around, I'm not seeing too many emerged weeds at this point. These are more the, the big ones that are hanging over. But if we think about comparing those two timings, pre gives a one big advantage in that we can use products that we can't use in the wheat crop. The immediate thing that comes to mind is Roundup for me, where that's a great product that we can use to control some of those really tough perennial and biannual weeds, whereas we don't have that opportunity when we're in the wheat crop. That being said, once we're in crop, there's still great products we can use. We just wanna make sure we're selecting based on the weed spectrum that we have. And often we wanna make sure those weeds are up at the time of application, especially if we're thinking about some of those grassy weeds that we might wanna tackle. Hey, it's, uh, it's late September now. Uh, let's talk a couple of uh, application tips to wrap this up. What about, uh, what about temperature when it comes to application? Yep, so I think often we can stick to that general rule of three, three degrees, three days before after. Now, when we talk about that rule of threes, that doesn't have as much to do with um, the crop safety. It's more about the weed control piece. And the idea behind that is we want those weeds to be actively growing at the time of application so that they can translocate that herbicide and get an effective kill. So ideally, daytime temperatures should be even warmer than three degrees. A nice uh, temperature to aim for is kind of a, just around that 10 degrees Celsius. Yep. What about frost? I mean, we're getting into that period yeah. now where we're seeing those, e those frosts coming in. Uh, how does that impact your strategy? Yeah, so frost is important to consider and it depends on the weed that you're looking at. So if, you've get, if you get a frost, it's important to wait 24, 48 hours before reevaluating that field and see, did that frost kill the weeds in the field or are they still actively growing? And it depends what the spectrum is. Something like a dandelion can handle a bit of frost and a herbicide application afterwards will still be good. It's the same with, if we're going after little baby flea banes that are just emerging, they can deal with frost and they'll still be growing. But a bigger flea bane like this is really sensitive to frost and will often start to yeah. die down pretty quickly afterwards. Yeah. Well, Curtis, hey, some great tips on uh, fall weed control. Hey, appreciate you making some time for the weed school. Thanks, Bern. Appreciate it.